Hey everyone, I'm Nick Amabile, CEO of DOS42. Today we'll be talking with Cy Patro, Senior Director of Data Engineering and Visualization at Johnson & Johnson for Supply Chain. Supply chains have never been more relevant than over the last 18 months. Johnson & Johnson Supply Chain helps deliver life-saving pharmaceuticals, medical devices, and consumer products to folks around the world. We'll talk about the challenges we faced building these applications and how Liquor was uniquely positioned to solve these challenges. Before I hand it over to Sai, I wanted to briefly introduce DOS42. DOS42 is a boutique data analytics consulting firm and an advanced Looker implementation partner. We were founded in 2015 to bridge the gap between business and technology. We focus exclusively on modern cloud-based analytics solutions and have capabilities across the full stack of data and analytics, including data pipelining, data warehousing, business intelligence, analytics, and data-driven applications. Today, we'll be talking about our work with Johnson & Johnson, but we've been lucky enough to work with really awesome customers like Uber, Amazon, Snapchat, Walmart, Kohler, and others. Our work with companies such as Johnson & Johnson focuses on delivering against what we call our full stack philosophy. These are things, irrespective of technology, that we believe all companies should do to become data-driven. First and foremost is centralizing your data. Oftentimes, data lives in third-party SaaS applications and data silos. By liberating your data from third parties and data silos, you're able to create a holistic picture of your business. Once you have your data centralized, you need to create a reliable source of truth and standardize metric and dimension definitions across multiple systems, while also creating trust and transparency by documenting those definitions, creating a data governance program, and automating data quality checks. Then it's important to get data to everyone in your business. Getting data to the salespeople, customer service reps, marketing folks, and others who typically can't code. By making data accessible to everyone, folks are able to ask and answer their own questions quickly without being limited by IT bandwidth or a centralized analytics team. Once your team has access to data internally, it's time to start thinking about how to operationalize your data in new ways. This could be machine learning or predictive analytics or building custom data-driven applications like we'll be talking about today. This allows you to monetize and differentiate your product or service offering by empowering internal as well as external stakeholders with a curated and customized analytics experience. Johnson & Johnson likely needs no introduction to many of you. They are a global leader in healthcare innovation. Many of their products are literally household names, brands like Tylenol, Band-Aid, and Listerine. But they also produce life-saving pharmaceutical products and medical devices. Of course, most recently, they were one of the first companies to develop a vaccine for COVID-19. Being a global and diversified company certainly isn't easy. It takes a complex supply chain to make it all work, from raw materials to manufacturing to distribution and delivery. Johnson & Johnson's global supply chain team relies on data and analytics to ensure that the folks who need their products get them safely and efficiently. Today, I'm pleased to introduce Cy Patro, Senior Director of Data Engineering and Visualization for Supply Chain at Johnson & Johnson. DOS42 has been working with Cy and his team for about six months to modernize a set of three applications that are critical to enabling supply chain managers with data analytics to spot and remediate troubled shipments, optimize manufacturing efficiency, and understand delivery performance. DOS42 has been working with Cy and his team for about six months to modernize a set of three applications that are critical to enabling supply chain managers with data and analytics. This helps them spot and remediate troubled shipments, optimize manufacturing efficiency, and understand delivery performance. Sai, welcome and thanks for being here. Thank you, Nick. Hi, everyone. I am Sai Patro, and I'm running the data engineering and visualization team in the supply chain enterprise team. When you see Johnson & Johnson, there are three business units. One is pharmaceuticals, second is consumer products, third is uh, medical devices. Pharmaceuticals is known for advanced biological and other treatments to prevent diseases. Um, it has immunology, cardiovascular, the infectious disease, uh, the COVID vaccine comes under this. Consumer products talk about the self-care, beauty products, and medical devices is about the surgery, vision care, and all that. Like any other manufacturing company, there are main functions, which is manufacturing, planning, sourcing, and delivery. Manufacturing is all about making the product, where we talk about the plants, the assembly lines. There we are interested in data to calculate the yield, the output of the man manufacturing systems. And planning is a very crucial function in any manufacturing or any you know, supply chain company, where we talk about demand planning, supply planning, and based on that, we decide how much to produce, how much to move between, um, you know, distribution center to distribution center. Sourcing is all about our suppliers, the raw materials, the supplier performance and all that. And the last one is the delivery, which is about any shipment of products 
between a distribution center to distribution center which is internal or it can be to a specific customer which is external. This is a very important function because it directly impacts our customer experience and throughout the discussion today we'll be focusing some use cases from the deliver function. Being in the enterprise team, my team works for all the sectors in Johnson & Johnson. When we're talking about supply chain data application, what it means is it's a suite of applications that are required for business users to use and make business decisions. This can be a very simple BI solution, a dashboard, which will show you historical data, uh, the anomalies, the trends against a uh, target, or it can be an operational application using the real-time data. Now, when we are talking about any application here, it is all about how can we use these applications and make the data-driven decisions. When we build these applications in end-to-end -end visibility, internal applications had some challenges. Uh, one of the challenges is we were not being able to support our business users to use in order to create their personal dashboards or reports. And second challenge being, as we are creating these applications as custom applications, deploying them, making any changes to them was taking a long time and it was costing a lot of money. And third one, which is about the real-time application, when you are talking about real-time data, the traditional approach where you can create a extract and make analytics or do analytics on top of that is not possible. I will give an example where, uh, you know, the orders are coming in a real time. Now, when the orders are coming in real time, you have to do some kinds of analytics on that. Creating an extract is not possible there. So these are the three big challenges that we faced when we built our into end solution uh, internally. Now that we talked about challenges, when we thought about building this new tool, the challenges are not the only issues. We had to make sure when we build these applications, there is not much change from the old way or old look and feel. That is mainly because that involves a lot of change management. Our main goal was to avoid a lot of change management so that it will be less training or no training for our business community. That is how the main goal of building this application was to make sure though it's a new tool, it should look like the old one. We will talk about the three main applications today on the deliver side. The first one is OTIF. This means on time in full. This is a very important metric for our leadership because this directly impacts our customers. What exactly it means is, did we deliver or ship the product or the order on time in full? So depending on the milestone you are targeting, it can be OTIF at ship, means did we ship on time in full or did we deliver on time in full that is OTIF ship and OTIF deliver those are the two metrics are tracked as part of OTIF then the second one is the deliver control tower here you see all the information about shipments in one place the real-time tracking and tracing the temperature control everything that we are interested in seeing for a shipment the third one is the KBR which is the quarterly business review this is targeted towards our leaders where they can see at one place the deliver business performance, the reliability, customer experience, everything at one place. So these are the main three applications on the deliver side that we will talk about. If you see there is another thing that is actually targeting all the three are the failure modes which is about the customer failure mode, the order management failure mode, product availability, distribution and transportation which ultimately impacting this you know kpis now that we have talked about what otif is let's dig deeper and understand what is the otif challenge here the main challenge is performance when we're talking about otif that is calculated in every order line level when we're talking about a sector and we are talking about two years of data then we are seeing a 200 millions of rows in one table and every order information has lots of information like customer, country, and all that. And that approximately goes to 200 columns. Now we are talking about a huge data table on which we have to do analytics. In OTIF dashboard, a user can slice and dice the data in any dimension. For example, 
he, the user can actually uh, slice and dice the data by geographic, a country or a region, or for a particular time period like a year, month, quarter, a week. On top of that, they can choose different options like they want to see the absolute data as a number or a percentage. On top of that, they also can choose the metric OTIF at ship or OTIF at delivery. With all these permutations and combinations, the slicing and dicing of data with all these filters, it becomes a very big technical challenge when it comes to performance. As we talked about this in the previous slide, the Deliver Control Tower application is all about shipments. In this Control Tower application, we look at the real-time tracing and tracking of a shipment. And with that, all the information about that shipment, uh, not only the uh, tracing and tracking, but also the estimated time of arrival, the temperature control, if this is applicable for that particular shipment, and all that information you can see in one place. As you might have guessed, this data is coming through sensors. And this is not a traditional BI dashboard application because the data is coming through sensors in real time. The application has to consume the data through APIs. On top of that, because of location, we have to see this data on a map, on a street level. And another challenge with this is this has to be done as a custom application because it is used for operations. The final challenge on this one is when this is used for operations, the users of this, they can edit some of the data to reflect the latest update on that or for collaboration. All the challenges are there in this control tower application. QBR application is the quarterly business review. This is mainly focused for the deliver side leadership. The leaders we want to see the business performance when it comes to the deliver side of the function. They want to see the reliability, the customer experience, all these metrics at one place. And this is a quarterly review that is done through this application, as in this application is used as a presentation. Now, all these data that is feeding to these applications are not coming from a database. That's coming from different people for different franchises in different regions. And they would like to come and edit the data in the application itself so that it is showing the latest update on that quarter for that particular franchise and for that particular metric. So we have to enable some kind of data editing. And as I mentioned, this application also is used for the real time presentation mode. The performance actually matters a lot. And given that it is also expo you know, exposed to the leadership, we have some constraints with respect to look and feel of this application. So all these three challenges had to be done as a custom application to fulfill all the requirements. Now that we have talked about different challenges in these applications, I would like to hand over this to Nick to talk more about how did we go about implementing this thing in Looker. Yeah, thanks, Sai, uh, for walking us through the different applications and the challenges that you, know, you and your team faced. Um, as we worked with Sai and the team to design a solution that would deliver a more flexible and robust analytics experience uh, for their supply chain team, Looker stood out as a clear platform of choice. On the back end, to solve the challenge that Sai talked about with all the permutations and different levels of aggregation, percents, counts, the 200 million rows of data, we use Looker's persistent derived tables and aggregate awareness uh, features to pre-aggregate different permutations. We use PDTs to have different levels of aggregation and then use the aggregate awareness to dynamically select which table to use on the back end based on what was in the user's query. Previously, the Johnson & Johnson team had to manage a really complex system to be able to support these different metrics and permutations, but the flexible solution that Looker offered was far superior. In addition, as I mentioned, real-time is a super critical component here of shipping and tracking. So the ability for Looker to query the data where it lives in a data warehouse was super important to fulfilling those requirements. So by not extracting the data into a cube, Looker queried the data directly in the data warehouse and the Johnson & Johnson team is able to access the freshest data in the data warehouse in real time. One of the key requirements that Sai mentioned uh, as well was the need to keep the look and feel of the applications consistent, but while still creating that flexibility on the back end for users and developers. We use Looker's extension framework to quickly leverage Looker's out of the box dashboards and data visualizations in certain cases. And in other cases, we actually leverage custom visualizations to create a completely white label and curated experience for Johnson & Johnson's users. This is a legacy QBR application that Sai showed us earlier. 
And this is the updated QBR application being powered by the Looker extension framework. You can see how the look and feel are really consistent between both versions. And someone who was working in the old application would have no problem switching over to the new version. You can see there's editable text at the top half of the screen, a set of custom navigation options, and Looker embedded charts below. By using Looker for the visualizations, the Johnson & Johnson data team can maintain a centralized governed data model that is flexible and easy to change while giving their team the look and feel that they're used to. While Johnson & Johnson had a complex set of requirements, the transition from legacy to Looker was relatively fast and smooth. The Looker extension framework allowed us to develop quickly and not have to reinvent the wheel for things like basic data visualizations and gave us the flexibility to create a fully customized user experience that was familiar to their business users. All this was accomplished within a matter of months. As we launch these sets of applications in production, Johnson & Johnson will be able to quickly and easily iterate on new features and user requests. And now back to Sai for some uh, additional comments and outcome on the project. So all the challenges that we talked about in the previous slides Using Looker, we could build those applications that really solve the problems for our business users who are using these applications in, in their daily life to make data-driven decisions. All these applications are deployed in production now. And as we pointed out before, we have seen a lot of improvements, improvement in the performance. And uh, we can see that our users have been able to use it and they create their own reports and dashboards. And in real-time scenarios also, we are deploying this and we are seeing real-time analytics of the data. So far, we have seen a lot of success through Looker. And uh, that's, for that, I am really thankful to the Looker team. Awesome. Thanks so much, Sai. It's been great partnering with you and I uh, hope everyone enjoys the rest of the conference.